there, we're Whitney and Jonathan. Thank you for choosing to watch our video. As you can see, we are sitting on our newly installed Cali flooring. Before you start watching the video, there are two things that I wanted to tell you. The first thing that I would recommend is watching the entire video before you start your project. And the reason that I say that is because as we go along with the install, there are things that came to mind like, oh shoot, we should tell them this tip. We should tell them this trick. We kind of discover things as we go along. And then I also just wanted to share that you will see us again at the end after the install footage to kind of share some of our overall thoughts, feelings, suggestions, and so on. So happy watching. My name is Whitney and I am the primary voice of Follow the Whisper. Typically, my family sticks to vlogging. We have been documenting a new adventure for our family. We sold our prior home, we moved into my sister's basement, and we bought a 10 acre property with a home that we are completely renovating from top to bottom. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. I wanted to give more of a how-to on installation and also kind of a review of our overall thoughts of a specific product. We used Cali flooring in our last home and that was probably about 850 to 900 square feet that we installed it on. After a little bit of a learning curve, we were able to install that pretty successfully. And I thought that it might be helpful for us to go ahead and document our upcoming install. We have about 2,000 square feet of space that we are going to be installing these floors on. We went with the Cali Longboards this time. We chose their Pro Series and the color or style that we chose is the Seaboard Oak. We have our floors down to the subfloor. Fortunately, everything is pretty level, and so we did not need to put any other sort of underlayment. We did not need to do self-leveler or anything like that because the subfloors that we have at present are in pretty good shape. I wanted to show that an everyday person can install these floors by themselves. My husband and I are not professionals. We are not contractors. He is a network engineer, and and I am a stay-at-home mom and a homeschooling mom. So if we can do it, you can do it as well. Might it take several days? Yes, and this is definitely going to take several days, but you can do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here before we unbox and get going. The first step is just cleaning up, sweeping and vacuuming and making sure that we have a, a clean start and a clean surface to get going on. So in case you are wondering what 2,000 square feet of luxury vinyl planks look like in one word before they are installed, the answer is overwhelming. I'm giggling because we have an item weight of 66.6 pounds on each of these boxes, which is like half of my body weight. <laughs> so this is going to be really fun and a really good workout to carry all of these inside. But one by one, one step at a time. Turn. Our house, if you can see here as I'm panning, is a rancher and the length of the house goes this way. So we are starting at our front door. We are running the boards lengthwise and yeah, we will uh, just kind of get going here. Before you get started with laying your first row, Kelly does recommend that you measure the width, I guess it would be, of the space that you are filling because you want to make sure that if you are starting with the full width of a board that you do not run it the whole way across the floor, get over to the other end of your space and are only left with, you know, an inch or two of board just for maintaining the structure of it and the integrity of it. They recommend that the last row be at least a third of the width of an entire board. So we are going to measure the span of our space from front to back and then divide that by the uh, board width to figure out how many rows it's going to take us and to ensure that we do have at least a third of a board there at the end. If that is not the case, then we will trim the first row back and not put a full board on the first row.
we are going to start in the corner with the right edge against the wall. That will allow both of the click tracks to be exposed. So there's piece number one. Piece number two is going to be a full board in the second row. Kelly does recommend that for the first two rows that you alternate row one, row two, row one, row two. So Jonathan kind of puts it in the track there and then works it until it lays flat. They also recommend using a rubber mallet, which we do have and we will use for extra security once we have it feeling good. But yeah, now we need a full board and we are gonna backfill and we're gonna go back up to row one here. Here, hold on, I'll help you. You don't wanna snap off the click mechanism. We did encounter that a little bit with our last install that if you try to force it, it will break. And then if that breaks, you can't guarantee the water tightness. So we have the back end in. What we'll have to do now is kind of lift up on the second row, I think, to get that to lock into place here. And I need my hands, so I'm gonna help. And what Jonathan is doing now is he is writing underneath our wall paint there where the trim will hide it, the measurements of the vents. At this point in time, we feel like it's probably better to go ahead and lay some more boards out and get these rows going because we wanna make sure that we have it positioned exactly where we want it to be along the wall with that quarter inch gap. If we cut out those vents right now as we're laying them, things might shift a little bit until we get the first couple of rows in place. So we're going to go ahead and lay some more boards, try to get maybe another couple of rows in, and then because he has the measurements written out on the wall there, then we will go back with our oscillating tool and we will cut out exactly where those uh, vent openings need to be. All right, so we're working along here. We had piece one, two, three, four, five. Just continuing to work with these seams. Yeah, it definitely takes a feel. I mean, it's not, it's not the easiest thing <laughs> to get down. I will say. Ooh, that one felt like it locked. Yeah, I, I heard that one. All right, so we have our first two rows in. We did follow their instructions and started over here on the right side, working our way left. We did start with piece number one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and alternated back and forth. I'll be honest, Jonathan and I don't quite understand the logic there because we feel like we've kind of tried it both ways now and we feel like if you just go straight across that that doesn't put you at any significant disadvantage but we followed their instructions definitely a learning curve because what happens in the first couple of rows is when you get some of the pieces to click together some of the other ones loosen which is frustrating but we got it what we are doing now you are supposed to leave at least a quarter inch gap around the edges to allow the floor to be truly floating for expansion and contraction but we also want to make sure that we have the floor as square as possible because as we move along, if that you know changes, if we are slightly angled, we're gonna end up with a really wonky last row that's gonna be very crooked and diagonal. Some of that is just gonna happen because obviously our house is 20 years old and probably not perfectly square. But what we're doing, we have this straight line in our subfloor. So we are measuring from the end of our second row to the straight line in the subfloor to make sure that before we keep adding rows here and getting heavier and heavier, that we are as square as possible. So we're gonna work on getting that equal at all points. We have had our first instance where we have to use something other than score and snap. When you are just cutting the boards short on the ends, you can just take your utility knife, score it and snap right on that line. It's very easy as we have shown, but here we have a wrapping piece. So this is a little wall that separates dining and kitchen. The refrigerator is going to be over here. And so we need this piece to wrap around. We can't just end it here because if we did that, there would be no way to connect and uh, have that float over into 
the kitchen area. So what we did is we marked where we need to cut that piece and Jonathan is going to go ahead and use our multi-tool to cut that out. Kelly does recommend that for wrapping pieces, you do still use a power tool, but if it is just cutting an end, then it is okay to just score and snap. Like I said, it's a process. Sometimes you have to work with it just a little bit. That'll fit a lot better. Lack so of love. Quick then. Um, obviously, the trim will hide perfectly. Look at that. Flat. Flat. Trim will hide. Yeah. So the trick is when you're installing, you butt this piece up to this one, you lift this bottom piece up, slide it into the track, and then give it a little shimmy shimmy until it lays flat. That's the scientific install process. Moment of truth. Did I measure correctly? I don't know. But again, the piece that you're wanting to interlock, you kind of lift up and lay in the track. Try to get it as tight as you can there. And then what you need to do is just kind of shimmy it until you can get it to lay flat. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit closer. So I'm gonna shimmy it down here. Here we go. And then that's laying nice and flat. It feels pretty good there, but we still want to kind of lock that in place. So then you get your mallet. You use the white end so that you don't mar Do and not. mark your floor. Ooh, Give it a little love click. tap there. It clicked in. Oh, we're good to go. All right. Is it tight up against there? got a couple rows under our belts here and we are starting to make our way into this transition which is going to flow over into our kitchen. Our cabinets are not here yet unfortunately for install and you do not want to install these floating floors under the cabinets. You want them to remain truly floating and so you're just supposed to get them again within a quarter of an inch of your cabinets. So what we're going to do is we are going going to <laughs> watch my husband carry in a very heavy box. No, we're gonna take into consideration where the cabinets are going to lie. And if I can get down here and show you, there's gonna be an entire row here, and then this row is gonna have to be cut where those cabinets are gonna come out because they come out a little bit less than 24 inches. So we're gonna continue with this full row into the kitchen, and then obviously we're gonna um, just have to backfill once those cabinets are in place with the partial row. What Jonathan is doing right now is weighing down the floor with some heavy items. We have the bucket of mud there. We have a full box of flooring. We wanna make sure that the floor doesn't shimmy as we are you know, using the mallet and the block there to ensure that things are locked in place. We don't want the rest of the floor to shift because then that squareness is going to be impacted. So we are currently weighing down the rows that we have already installed so that it stays secure and we can keep Keep, keep going. Here is a very good example, if I can get at the right angle, of us knowing that that is not in the right place because you can see that it's floating there on the side. So you just have to keep working it. It is a little tough because right now we're wrapping into another room. And so that makes it a little bit less sturdy. But as you can see, now the board has dropped. 
So what we do when we're installing the boards is we try to do like a little visual inspection of each one. There have been two boards so far that we have set aside and Callie's customer support was really good. During our last renovation, we had a whole box where the connecting tracks were, for whatever reason, probably because of shipping, it probably wasn't even them, um, but they were kind of boogered up a little bit and broken at spots and they sent us a whole new box. We haven't encountered any issues with entire boxes this time around, but one of the boards was a little warped on the end where that track is. And this last board that we tried, there were a few spots that were chipped. So we're gonna just set those aside for now. If it in the end equates to a good bit of flooring, then we will of course reach out to them and uh, see what they can do. Probably doesn't look like a lot of progress, but we feel like we are making substantial progress because things just start to flow after you get the first couple of rows in. This seam right here on the sides doesn't exactly lock into place on its own like the top part does. You have to keep working the top track until you get the board to lay as flat as possible. And then once it does lay flat, which this one's not quite there yet. Give me trouble every time I pull the camera out. I feel like you have stage oh, right. Oh, it's okay, but it's out down here though. Wow. It's in up there. There. So right there, when it wants to lay flat except for the little seam, then you take out your mallet, give it some pretty decent taps. You can see. Yeah, when it locks in down there, and yep. it's also flush and then, too. Nice. Yeah. It feels like butter. All right, next. What do you think? Take a seat, tell everybody how it feels. <laughs> ah. Ooh, yeah. Four angels. Daddy's gonna join you. <laughs> oh man, this is so dramatic. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Thought I heard a puppy do, do. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Number one, Arlo approves of the new floor. Don't your body. Say so it's nice and cool and comfy. Number two, when you are doing wrap pieces, as we have had a few places, this is gonna be our island, and so we needed to wrap around there. We sit our whole plank up against whatever the obstruction is, whatever we're trying to wrap around. And so for example, I had a whole plank up here. I knew that the uh, wall was about three and a half inches deep. So I made a notch that was three and a half, a little bit more than that. You don't have to give quite a quarter inch when you're going up to cabinets um, like you do on the walls. But we did give a little bit of a buffer, of course, and then we measured the length of whatever it was that we needed to cut off. And then you also just need to make sure that when you're doing your wrap pieces that you are using um, pieces that are intact on this edge and have your connecting seams because as you wrap around it, you need to make sure that you can connect on this side as well. If it is a cut piece that does not have the connector on this end, it's kind of dead at that point and it won't connect, it won't lock into place. So you wanna make sure that you are using intact pieces when you are wrapping. So here's another good example of a wrap piece. Again, we're using a plank that is intact on both ends because we need to connect it to pieces on both ends, but we needed to make our way around the door jam here, the, the oh, closet yeah. opening. We cut out the notch and then it latches in just like Ooh. any other piece. Woo and these pieces are the ones that are going to take in the most time, but once they fit in, it's very uh, satisfying. For a wrap piece, we lay the piece that we need in flat, then we mark where the obstruction is, and then we measure how deep the obstruction is. So the door jam here is about an inch and a quarter deep. We made the marks on either side where we know that we need to cut for the door jam, and we know that we need to notch out an inch and a quarter. So then we will draw that out with pencil on the board. We just take our little oscillating tool and cut those notches out. 
When you're installing the individual planks, just make sure, especially with the seaboard oak, that you take a look at the plank and the pattern itself. We have a couple of boxes here and we're trying to mix and match so that we don't have a lot of the same, but we noticed that we have a repeating pattern twice in a row and that's okay, but the next board that I picked out to go here was the same one. So we decided that we did not want that one there. We're gonna put that one elsewhere. Just, just picked out another board. So make sure you do take a look at them before you go ahead and click them in place. It is, I think, the fourth day that we have been working on flooring. And for those of you who have not started your jobs yet, don't be discouraged that we're not very far because of the amount of obstacles that we have in the way. Jonathan working full time, I'm doing homeschool with the kids. But we have really made a lot of progress in the biggest spaces in our rancher. So I'll give you a little update here. The whole kitchen area is laid. The whole dining area is laid. And we are making a lot of progress over here in the family area. Down the hall, we are getting there. That closet is finished. And once we make our way down here, then we will be going into the bedrooms. The bedrooms are gonna be a little harder because we're gonna have to backfill some of those. As I mentioned, it is much easier to lay from the right side of room to the left because that is where the tracks are on the full boards. A couple of tips that I have when you are laying your pieces, you wanna lay it in here from the bottom. Once you get the piece on the track, then what I usually do is come around from this side lift the board and kind of wiggle it into place. I actually find that I get a better click by just wiggling and using my own muscles. And then if there is a board that I cannot get to lock in for any reason, then that is when I resort to the tab and block. And another thing that I will say is it's not as precise as you think it would be. Going around the fireplace around here, we just kind of put a board up to the end, take some rough measurements, draw some lines, and cut. And the fortunate thing in that is that these boards are really reusable. So for example, you're gonna see a board or two over here that we made cuts in, and then it didn't get as close to the ledge as we wanted it to. But the fortunate thing is that you can cut those edges off. You still have a uh, live track here and down here. So we will be able to use that as an end piece on the left side of the room at some point. So don't fret if you make cuts that don't work for you, it's going to happen. Try your best and reuse it somewhere else. Okay, and this piece was cut on this end and so it is dead on this side and that is okay um, to use against the wall here. I have this other piece that is dead on this end. Let's measure and figure out how much I need to cut this board back. All right, so that measures 28 on the money. I need a quarter inch gap over here. So I'm going to do 27 and three quarters on this board. So I need this quick track. So I need 27 and three quarters from that side. So it's been a couple of weeks since we finished our flooring install and I just wanted to show you what the almost finished product looks like when you get trim and everything up. Not only are we doing the floors, but we are renovating our entire house from top to bottom. So we have a lot of those finishing details to continue to work on, but I did wanna show you what the flooring looks like with our trim in place, at least in some areas, and it truly is awesome. The longer we have had the floor in, the more we love it, and we absolutely would install install this same flooring again. The long boards in the seaboard oak finish are beautiful and definitely fit our aesthetic. We're really happy.
And obviously our home is still a little bit of a construction site. We have some loose ends to finish up, but as you can see with the countertops and the cabinets in place and our appliances and Jonathan doing his work <laughs> from the island, sorry love. It is really coming along and we love how the floors kind of warm up the space and make it feel cozy. We're super, super happy with the finish. We're back. <laughs> so Jonathan and I, we are definitely DIYers. We're not professionals and we don't pretend to be, but I will also say that on the DIY scale, we are pretty brave. There's not much that we won't do. We will do, we will do plumbing, electrical, kind of tackle it all. That being said, if you are lower on the bravery scale when it comes to DIYing, or if all of this is very new to you, I would not recommend doing what we did as far as seamless install of 2000 square feet. We did not use a single transition piece in our entire house. So what that means is we started where we wanted to start at the front door area and worked our way around the entire house. So when we we would wrap into a closet. That meant that we would wrap the door jam and continue that flow. When we would wrap into bedrooms, we would continue that flow. What that means, and it's a lot harder probably than it actually sounds, is that as we mentioned from the beginning, Callie recommends starting on the front right side of the room working from right to left. Well, when you are wrapping into a bedroom that goes the opposite way from the boards that you've already laid, that is called backfilling. You have to do a lot, a lot of backfilling when you want those seamless transitions and that's hard. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you are okay with transition pieces and you just want the simplest install of flooring and use transitions, for your bedrooms, use transitions for your closets, use a transition for your bath because their transition pieces are still very attractive yeah. and very low profile. It's not something that is gonna be a tripping hazard or anything like that. But then what you can do is you can essentially start a fresh project in every single room. Start at the corner they recommend and work from right to left in every room. What we had to do in several rooms was work backwards and that's a lot harder because of the connecting tracks and where they're located. Right. If you are going to be brave and do the seamless transitions like we did, when you find yourself filling the wrong way into a room, here is what you can do to make your life easier. Go into that room and do the first row backwards because you have to until you get to the wall. Once you get a full row over to the wall, then you're gonna start working right to left again, which is the way that's easier. You're still gonna be backfilling in that you're not gonna be working your way from the wall toward you. You're gonna be working from you to the wall. So there's still one component of installing backwards, but the hardest thing is when you have both components of installing backwards. When you are installing away from the boards and from left to right, it's almost impossible because you have to like put things underneath to get the, the tracks to lock together. So I know that probably sounds confusing, but you are going to know what I'm talking about when you get there. Work one row over to the wall and then you can work from right to left even though you're still going away from yourself. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, nothing is perfect, and the flooring, as much as we love it, like, because it is super thick. I mean, we got samples of this flooring and a bunch of other pipes from Lowe's when we did the first house, and this one was so much thicker. The wear layer was very thick. The, the like cushioning that they attached to the bottom was more significant. Yeah, and like it was significantly different than any of the other samples. That and that found. that's why we went with Cali. They were a little bit more expensive, but we just felt it was worth it. And also that sound in the background is Arlo walking around <laughs> on the flooring. What I was gonna say is it's, it's, there are things about it that are not perfect. Like it is pretty difficult to get 
the hang of putting it together. So I think it was probably pretty obvious from the video, but you kind of like get in a flow and gain confidence as you go. We joke around, but it's not really a joke in saying that if you're gonna DIY luxury vinyl planks, you are going to hate your life for like the first couple of hours that you do it without exception. So it will get easier. That is one thing that I do wanna say. And then even afterwards, the butt or end joints sometimes just seem to have like little issues or they don't completely lock together. I don't know if that's us installing it or if it's just the product, but you can notice that in some areas when we're walking around yeah. with the cracks and pops. When you are walking around on the flooring for the first couple of days after install, those those joints like he was talking about, I think some of them still need to like fully lock into place. You will hear a good bit of popping and cracking. Yeah. And I don't think that's just us. I think it just takes time for things to settle in. We noticed in our last house that that was more pronounced when it was cold outside. So in the winter, when we would come downstairs in the morning and walk around on the floor, we would even notice it months after install, really. Now, I well, it does expand and contract a little bit with the temperature, so. That right is bound to happen but the quality again i think is the best as far as luxury vinyl plank and like with arlo running around his nails we've never noticed a scratch no. on it and back to the popping and cracking one more time real quick so we installed this area of the flooring that we're sitting on right now pretty much right in the beginning so it's probably been a month ish at this point and I notice that a lot less so yeah. you notice it a lot at first don't think you did anything wrong you're gonna hear popping and cracking it will settle and I don't notice it hardly at all anymore mm -hmm. and it has been cold here a couple of days so that that does get better yeah one thing we also wanted to mention was like as you're laying the the boards is to be checking on the pattern and you know obviously for any damage you don't want to find or try to put in a piece that has damage with especially the well really any part of it but the connecting track is going to be really difficult or it won't stay locked in and the patterns do repeat so it's possible that you might get a few boards in a row that have the same pattern so trying to like be cognizant of that as you're laying it out is just yeah. I, tip, I know that we hit on that a little bit in the video, but it is a good reminder, especially if you're doing the seaboard oak. Our last floor was not quite as patterned as this one, and right. this one was a lot of repeating, so just be careful with that. Oh yeah, the other thing is staggering. So if you, like let's say you cut a piece that's 10 inches long, and then an X is 20 inches, and then like you're feeling, you don't really want to repeat that, otherwise you'll start to get that ladder effect. Um, or stair step effect, I guess you could say. It just doesn't look as natural yeah. Yeah, as when it's like randomly placed. So that's one other thing to, to be thinking about. Yeah, just mix up your mix up your seams. Yeah. The one last thing is that, like this is an expensive product. Installing a floor, even when you do it yourself, is an expensive project. And so you're going to want to utilize as much of the material as you can as possible. Just make sure that you try to utilize your waste pieces first before you go to full sheets. Like closets, they're usually obviously much narrower, so that's a really good place when you're going underneath appliances, because if you remember, you don't lay under cabinets, but you do lay under appliances. Appliances are usually, you know, 30 or 36 inches wide. So that's a good place to use those dead ends. And then obviously when you're going up to your wall or when you're meeting up with a fireplace or whatever, we really felt like, especially this time, we use our remnants really wisely. And there were not a lot of pieces where we ended up wasting more than you know like this much of a board in total because we may have only used a third of it to complete a row but then that remnant piece we were able to use either to start the next row or in a closet or whatever so try to use the remnant pieces first and even when you have a piece that is completely dead meaning that it doesn't have a connecting track on either side don't throw it away because that is a piece that you might be able to use wisely somewhere else like your closet or underneath an appliance any closing words Good luck. <laughs> that was not very encouraging. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's 
really not that bad once you get into it. There are some tricky spots, but just persist and you'll, you'll find a way to do it. Yeah, my takeaway both times that we've done it is it's definitely overwhelming at first. It is definitely a big project and it is going to take you time if you have a lifestyle like ours where this is you know, not your full-time job. He works full-time, I homeschool our kids full-time, so we have to make this happen when we can. It is a big job, absolutely, but is it worth it? I think definitely. We save a lot of money by doing it ourselves. Yeah. The results are beautiful and we're really happy with it. So happy installing, you can do it. And if there are any more specific questions that you have, don't hesitate to uh, leave us a comment and we will try to answer you as quickly as we can. Thanks. See ya. All right, so clearly we have somebody oh. else joining us for the video. Come, I'm gonna sit there, lay down with daddy. Honey, literally all they can see Oh, it's you. <laughs> With my little head peeking over top. And worked our right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>